What is Git and how do I use it? Hello, welcome to the Hello World Show. I'm Heather Downey. I'm Spencer Schneidenbach. And we are here with the great Lindsay Pageant. Hello. She is a senior software engineer from Kansas City, Missouri, a node grammar, which means a node programmer. <laughs> We're Her term. Trying to make I'm work. trying to make it a thing. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and an, a specialist with building APIs. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So tell us what you have for us today. What are you going to teach us? Yeah. So, you know, I think Spencer already covers REST pretty well. And I was thinking about talking about REST. But uh, today I'm actually going to talk about Git, uh, mm. which is another passion of mine. Uh, it wasn't always like that. Uh, I would say that anyone who worked with me at the first job that I used Git would not believe that I'm speaking on it now. But at some point it really clicked for me. And it, it is one of those kind of mind bendy things that you have to get used to. For sure. um, but yeah, my first my first couple experiences with Git were not good, and uh, and even after that, you know, you can use it at, as a at a basic level, but then you get yourself into these uh, problematic situations, and you're like, ah, help! I don't know what to do. I don't want to destroy my code. Um, so. Hopefully, I, I want to kind of cover some terms, uh, some terminology, and we'll talk about some ways that Git works and so that you you will know what you're doing when you type a command on the command line. And uh, that's, a, that's another point I want to make is that I feel that the best way to learn and use Git is on the command line and not through a UI. Um, you know, source tree and other IDEs have uh, th things built into them. Uh, I recommend that you use the command line because it's very explicit and you know exactly what you're doing. So um, I can just start, you know, with a simple diagram of, you know, you've got, you've got programmer here. Programmer's got the laptop, right? Uh, on the local laptop, you have a Git repository. Now, in order to make, this is going to be like in a file, right? So <laughs> this is, uh, I'm, I'm nowhere near, you know, David Neal uh, <laughs> ability uh, to sketch, but you get the idea here. So um, the, the command that you would use to actually take just a plain old folder, maybe it's got stuff in it, maybe it doesn't, that command is git init. So git init is what turns this folder into a git repository. And that thing just lives locally. Um, it knows that it's a Git repository because it, it's got this super top secret folder here called uh, dot .git, okay? And the dot .git folder just lives inside of your folder and it houses all of the history and all of that. Um, if you remove this folder, it's all gone. You know, you're pretty much starting over from scratch from a Git perspective. So git init creates this repository locally, and then if you want to, let's say, push it up to the cloud, uh, you know, let's say you've got this service up here. Might be GitHub, you know, that's the most popular one. Uh, Bitbucket server is pretty good, uh, pretty popular. Uh, Git labs, uh, things like that. So this is just some kind of cloud provider that hosts um, hosts a Git repository. And I should mention too, if you're if you're coming from a .NET experience and you use TFS a lot, Microsoft now also has this like gateway thing. I don't know if I'm using that proper terminology, but like uh, it's it looks and feels like TFS, uh, you know, so you can go to like your Azure portal and you can use what, what kind of feels like TFS, but then behind the scenes, it's actually just Git. And so you can use this connection in the same way that you can any other Git repository and, uh, and do Git things to it. So um, so this is, you know, something like GitHub. I'll just use that one because it's the most popular. And up here, you want to make a copy of your repository. That's essentially what we're talking about here. Uh, this has a connection, right? This repository knows that this repository is linked to it. And I use the word copy, um, but when we're talking about going the other direction, like pulling this repository down, which is often how you get code in the first place. You find it on the internet, and then you bring it down to your um, your local machine. That's called cloning. So kind of like a copy, right? 
And that's your remote repository of your... The remote uh, is actually just the connection mm. between these two. So if you think about a remote control, that's kind of how I remember it. Remote control, I it doesn't do anything by itself, but it's the connection to your TV, right? And, you know, you might have a smart remote that works with several different devices. And so that's a pretty good analogy. Um, the uh, cloning is the process of bringing this thing down here and then taking this and pushing it up to the cloud. So that's a git clone and that's a git push. It's, it's working with your remote um, w in, in one direction or the other. Now, the, the um, default name that most people are familiar with is origin. So origin is a nickname uh, for a remote. It, it is, by convention, uh, the first remote that you have. So this is a pretty typical example. You've got a GitHub repo, you've got a local repo, you've got one remote set up, and that's called origin. I'm going to run out of room here. Origin. Origin. <laughs> now, uh, if you wanted to, you could set this up somewhere else. So let's say you want it on GitHub, but maybe you also want it on Bitbucket Server. Um, there could be many reasons for wanting to do that. Um, you know, not every internet provider is 100% reliable. Maybe you want to make sure that no matter what, you're going to have a copy. You're super paranoid. <laughs> uh, so one is GitHub. Let's call this Bitbucket. Um, and you want to have a copy there as well. So in that case, you actually have two remotes now. And Sometimes, like what you'll see as far as, a, a, again, a convention on naming, because these remotes can be called whatever you want, but a lot of times you'll see something called upstream. Upstream generally means that while you have a read-only connection fr from this repository, you cannot push your changes directly into it. And that's kind of like, uh, you know, somebody here has, uh, we're going to call this user one, user one has this repository. I love user one's code, right? And rather than pull it down directly, um, I mean, I could do that, but I, s I do this process of forking. That's the difference between a fork and a clone, is that forking happens exclusively in the cloud, whereas a clone is from the cloud, essentially, to your, to your local nice. device. So that's that's that process. And so user one's code is so awesome. I want to have it for my very own. And so I fork it, and I'm user two here. Oop, user two. And then I can bring down the uh, repository via clone. I can interact with that cloning and pushing. And then this is more like if I want to see what user one has been up to, right? Because once I fork, it's kind of like a copy, right? It, it has a reference back to its own, uh, its own origin, if you think of it that way. Um, but this now is a standalone thing. And so I can operate on it, and I can make changes. But in the meantime, user one might be doing really cool stuff. And I might want to pull that in uh, if and when it's convenient. So this is kind of a, um, a triangle that you see a lot. Um, of course, because I mentioned remotes are just connections to any repository, you could have many, potentially. Um, you know, you could have all different kinds of places where you host these um, or, or make them available, I guess. And you can even set up your own Git server. Um, you could set that up using a machine sitting in your basement or something and push to that if you wanted to. They're all just considered remotes. So that's kind of the basic, uh, the basics of Git. Do you guys have any questions as far as this goes or next steps? Well, I can, so let me adjust my mic. Um, I can speak to, like, I learned Git through a GUI, and I will tell you that I really wish I'd started on the command line. I agreed. So yeah, so, Same. so where's the best, where does somebody get started on, like, what, what's a good resource for them to get started learning it on the command line? Um, well, there are, first of all, I would actually encourage people to explore and play with it. And the best way to do that is to set up a repository with code 
or something in there that you care nothing about. And that <laughs> way you can really get in there and use it as your, your Git playground and you can start uh, reading and then and then doing it as you go. It, because Git is not one of those topics that you could read a book cover to cover and be like, yep, I know Git now. It's really about exercising it. Um, so you want to have that set up before you even go into any reading. Um, the the um, There is uh, a book in PDF form um, that is free, and you can download it from uh, git-scm.org, I believe is the, is the URL there. Um, it's the Git website. And uh, there are a couple guys who authored that and made it available. Mm -hmm. um, it is much more approachable, I think, than the Git documentation. Git documentation's great. And now that we've kind of defined some terms, I would encourage you to go um, to the documentation and look those up and kind of understand how they work a little bit more. Um, but the documentation is is uh, is bland, right? It's kind of dry, so it's helpful to read that um, that PDF. And you could actually buy it in a physical copy, but why would you buy something if you could get it for free? Right. Um, so that's a good one. Um, Tower is it, it, they actually make a UI for Git, and I. You know, I don't encourage that necessarily, but they do have a really good cheat sheet uh, that is that is out there that I kind of point people to also. Um, yeah, so that's what I would recommend is um, is checking them out. And uh, yeah, just playing with it is going to be the most helpful thing. Beyond this, you can get into the details of branching. So, you know, we don't have time to get into that today, but um, branches is where sometimes people get confused, they paint themselves into a corner, um, and the thing I would take away uh, with that is that branching is cheap. So branch branch a lot. If you're ever in a situation where you're not sure if you're going to destroy some code, make a new branch. Uh, if you can, push that branch somewhere safe, and then go about y whatever you're trying to do, because if you screw it up, you'll have a backup. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. Don't forget to share this video on social media. And comment below to be entered into our weekly giveaway. Tell us what questions you have for our guests. See, See you, you next time. time.